I like it. <laughs> oh, that's good. It looks like you have a wig on. That's beautiful. I love it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can. I'll. St- I'll go to the extreme side or something here. Primarily critical of movies and after party, this would be it. If you have not seen this film, we suggest that you do so before watching any further. Because we've got spoilers, trivia, and opinions like crazy, and we can't wait to share them. Good, bad, new, old, weird, or gross. We will pass judgment on them all. Today, a naked perspective. Uh, my name is Steve. I'm here with Bill and, and John. Uh, thanks, guys, for coming out. Uh, today we're talking about uh, uh, this is a movie title. <laughs> <laughs> so before I go any further, I'm going to apologize. This is the movie title of the movie that we're talking about. It's Coonskin. Um, mm. And I picked it. I picked it because I'm a fam- fan of Ralph Bak- Bakshi. And um, and and this one, uh, this this is uh, this is this is a very raw movie. This is a very raw, in-your-face movie, and uh, and I really want to know your guys' opinion of it. Well, I thought it sucked. Uh, what? <laughs> no, no. Uh, you know, you know what? I, I listen. This is before we let's let's frame the context of this movie. This was in 1974, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So and and this is a time when movie effects were becoming a thing, uh, right? It was it was people were playing with movie effects, and often there's I, like I, honestly there's a period in the late 60s and throughout the 70s where movie effects were just awful, right? And and I mean this kind of fell into that category for me is that it was like they're seeing hey we could do this just because you can do something doesn't mean it's always a good idea that's kind of how i felt uh, about the effects of this movie so i'll I'll, I'll frame it with that now i'll let someone else say say what they thought okay so from a technical movie making point of view you had an issue that it is pretty bad yes I, i agree on some levels it had some crude crude animation and such but to get to your point steve i enjoyed this movie i had a fun a fun time with it it was a funky funky racially charged movie that was just i you know it's 1974 i don't expect much from um certain things but it tried a lot of things it and tried, i had, it tried everything i i loved it and, and it, uh, it was I, adult I just, it was adult it was like you know, not a kids movie. It was I like that. Yeah. It was a very mature yes. movie, and it took a lot of risks. And yeah. I just I wow. loved the hell out of it. I loved the hell. It was just the whole movie was a character unto itself, and uh, it was it, it was trippy, wasn't it? Like yeah, it was first trippy. words in the movie is "fuck <laughs> you," right yeah. off the top of the movie. I'm like whoa, <laughs> and. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Oh man, um, uh, good people. Pick. I don't want to. I don't want to step on the trivia here, but apparently, people ran out of the movie theaters screaming because because uh, they were so offended by it. And uh, but I, I'm not sure. Offended? Offended? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure that I, I uh, just... <laughs> that that it. I, I hmm. oh, I really don't want to step on my. <laughs> I don't want to put my foot in my mouth, uh, but I, I, I'm thinking that maybe white people would be a lot more offended than uh, than black people in this movie. Uh, there's there's a really hard line in between white and black. John, thoughts? Well, yeah, no, I I, I think so. I mean, and hey, listen, I, I when I say it sucked, I'm coming from a standpoint of film filming. As far as uh, as the movie itself, I I didn't think it, it was horrible. I, I actually. As far as the racial stuff, I mean, you know, yeah, there's definitely, um, you know, there's there's stereo definitely it, it really uh, exemplifies stereotypes in here, right? It, it really, uh, but 
you know, that's okay. It's, that's not new to movies. I, that didn't, I don't find it offensive personally. I, I think it's, it's art, right? So you got to always take that step back and say, Hey, this is not the real world. This is someone's take on the, the real world. And, and from that standpoint, I could get past the offensive stuff. It, well, it didn't, it didn't, you know, uh, make my gut churn from that standpoint. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, to me, this is kind of like one of the first gangster movies, man. I mean, this is you know, 74. This is, yeah. this is like a kind of a way in a mob movie, you know? It, it, it was a mob movie. I think I wrote down what I, I thought this movie uh, was to me. It, it, it was a very blunt, no sugar coating. It's got a lot of anger and hate. It's gritty, violent cartoon action movie, but it had humor and it, it, I made a note of black exploitation movies of the seventies, right? And uh, yeah, it was so self-aware or something. It was it was pretty pretty edgy. Could you imagine this movie if it was made today in the climate in, Amer in America? Because there's very strong themes of Miss America, right? Mm, right. Yes. yes. Yeah. And yeah. and like yeah. I think you, someone alluded to Steve is very black and white, like literally in color on the screen and it is and stereotypes yeah like the italian mobster there's asian there's homophobic stuff it's yeah a lot of homophobic stuff there's a there's a jewish guy in there that's incredibly jewish um but i i like the voice talent in this movie i, I and the music the music was is cool yeah and and um it's just a really different kind of movie you know and uh like animation and and like it, it did you guys must have seen who framed roger rabbit right yeah I, that's another I, movie that did the live action and and everything you know so I think this came out before before who framed roger rabbit Long oh, yeah. way before sure. way before yeah i think roger rabbit came out and who framed roger rabbit came out uh 80s, right? late 80s yeah well, there's been other early movies. 90s other movies oh. like uh <clears throat> you know Monty Python did stuff. I, I, this movie kind of reminded me of Monty Python with the extreme um, cartoon humor and 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 just over the top kind of things. Racially yeah, I mean, I, I, there was the, the the to me. I have to come back to the effects. I think they overdid. Like you know, I, I know um, I'm not an animation, a huge animation fan like you are, Steve. For example, I, I'm not. That's not my cup of tea. Yeah. Uh, but I will say this: is that when. Like they did things, and I'll take one example, and there was other ones in the movie, but the, the one that really drove it home was when they killed the, the Italian, the mob boss's uh, wife there. It went into this, she turned into a butterfly, turned an angel, and, and all the animation, amazing animation effects, right? A bunch of, it was kind of this thing like, hey, look what I can do from an animation point of view, but it just takes you right out of the movie. I mean, it just really didn't, it went off on a tangent there that I didn't even understand how it even related to the movie. And this went on for, I think about five minutes, you know? So you're kind of just like, had I known, I would have gone to get, you know, go for a pee or something because <laughs> this was just a big waste of time. Right. As far as I'm concerned. Now, maybe you guys are, you know, people who appreciate animation were really captivated by that stuff. Wasn't my cup of tea. I didn't like those moments where it just kind of like, Oh, we're into one of these animation interludes that don't really, contribute or make sense with the story to me steve i gotta hear your take on that because you're well, yeah you gotta wonder even in disney um they the animators sometimes go off on a tangent um i think what was the there was a disney there was a disney pink elephant scene remember yeah. in in uh oh uh, dumbo yeah it was dumbo, dumbo? Uh, yeah, they, they drugged them and and uh, and and they went on this big weird trippy pink elephant flying around. And <laughs> totally, there's been trippy stuff in animation before, and I think this movie was pretty art, uh, kind of artsy, uh, trippy kind of movie that was it was pushing creativity. Uh, well, yeah, like if I was high, and and unfortunately I, I quit weed years ago. But if I was high, I probably would have. I I, I would have loved this. You know, I, I probably would have enjoyed that part a lot more. But uh, yeah. I, I'm not high, so you know, was, and I wasn't high. It was. Uh, it was. I'm sure there was some hey, message was your wife? There that, was, that was lost. Like I mean, when when they killed the mafia 
Don's Mafia Don's wife. Um, I'm it's sure they were the she was trying to send a message or something. But the there was other there was other cut cutaway scenes that were uh, that were much clearer metaphors where there's this dude. Um, there was this um, uh, dude hitting on on Miss America or Lady. Is it Miss America? Mrs. Uh, Miss America? America? Miss America. Yeah. He, Miss he's, America. He's, he's yeah. hitting on Miss America as though as though he's an immigrant or, or you know what I mean? And and, and yeah. she he's uh she's giving him a hard time and not, and not letting him in, you know, and, and this that those right. are clear messaging, right? Yes, that was that was more clear and, and, and I appreciate the, the clarity of it. Uh, yeah. I like when the what you're trying to present through an animation makes sense. Uh, so yes, I appreciate that more than, yeah, the, the mob boss's death for sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or the mob a, boss's wife's death, yeah. Uh, it was at the end, uh, I think at the end when the animation stopped and they cut to uh, film, it was a, like, what was that at the end? It was like a big blob of humanity or uh, the, the characters and then it becomes the film again. Comes the guys in the car taking off. What did you make of that ending? It was, it was just really weird. And it was weird. It was weird. The ending and was I, the ending was awful. I mean, the ending was I, yeah, in, I, I, it, it, it was inconclusive. Um, and well, we, they were I, shot up, right? They were getting like they're trying to make a prison break. They had these guys show up to bust them out. Yeah, and then they're shot to hell. Guys, you can clearly see guys get shot, and they just rode off, and you don't know. And then that's it. And and then there's, there's this little scene with uh, a little girl. Oh, which yeah, is the a, little girl with with preacher there with. I think that was preacher, right? With the off, little like, the same guy off the top of the movie that was. Yeah, singing. yeah, yeah. The at the top of the movie, he was being followed by these couple of kids, and at the, oh, at the end of the movie, um, I don't know. He's. Um, we got to go back because they're waiting for us or something like that or. Yeah. I don't know. It's, so, it's, it's very nondescript. It was a very poor way. I think what they were trying to say is that we all made it now. They they successfully escaped, and you know because preachers was in that car of the escape. Now we're seeing him with the little girl, so we know. Okay, well, preacher got away, so they all must have got away, and he's saying, "Let's go go back and join the others." So it's supposed to just it's just a really quick way to say they got they got away. And to me, it was done very poorly. It wasn't a, a a nice way of saying they got away. It was just kind of like a let's wrap it up. Uh, we're out of money. The budget's done. Uh, let's just let them, the audience, know that they made it. You know, and yeah. what's the quickest way we could do that? Shoot one scene and and boom. You know, it's it's done. That that's how it felt to me. But I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, I don't know. It just yeah. It, I'm I, I'm curious to see what kind of budget they had for this. <laughs> they, they okay so they um we can all agree though that uh the cartoon story that the guy was telling him beside the prison wall is 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 like a flashback yes that that's my understanding yeah and w would you say that he the guy in prison there uh by uh scat carruthers there uh was he was r rabbit in the cartoon scenario I uh, or no, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah, I, that was my understanding. Yeah, yeah, like I wasn't sure. I, I wish they they'd made that connection so I knew that for sure. But I, I, I that's loosely kind of what I thought, but not sure about that. <laughs> it was it was a little a little wild, a little all over the place. But um, I'm I'm. Okay. I am more familiar with Ralph Batchke's work, and um, and and he doesn't like to draw a straight line. <laughs> he likes the abstract. He loves the abstract, right? Yeah. And, and, yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it wasn't a strong storyline. It was a more of a abstract kind of like jazz or something at times, right? Just just going doing things and. And yeah. Really yeah. poking poking fingers at racially charged things and and you know yeah, I, I had some. Did you guys not have fun? It's funny sh funny stuff with uh, like uh, when uh, 
Miss America gets uh, she gets motorboated. <laughs> she motorboats this kid. <laughs> and it's just, and then there's a scene where the bear gets his his junk yanked and is like it's bizarre shit. And yeah, it's some really animation. bizarre shit. There, there was yeah. um, there was a um, scene where uh, um, a homeless gentleman was run, rummaging through the the garbage, and he was looking for the stuff that White threw out, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he finds this sweater, this cotton sweater. Yeah, real cotton, natural cotton. Natural yeah. cotton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I love that. That was, it was just, yeah. I don't know. It just had so much, so much to chew on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, I guess maybe, I maybe, yeah. maybe it's too well, risky. Yeah. I don't know. A, a lot of people think this is a, a, a too risky. Oh, well, and I know like that. So that scene, the natural cotton, right? Yeah. What is this? Is this trying to make some link that I just went right over my head to uh, black people in the cotton fields picking cotton? Like, is it was there some? No, I think it was just um, it was just a. Uh, um, one man's garbage is another man's treasure, kind of thing, you know. Yeah, it's that simple. It, it was just nothing, there was nothing bigger yeah. there because I just kept on wondering with the natural cotton. I'm like, well, I, I've never even heard that term. I never looked at clothes in my entire life. And said, there's what? Like to me, that was like, what? There's a difference between cotton and natural cotton, right? <laughs> and so I'm thinking, why is there? Why does he keep saying natural cotton? There's got to be something to that. So maybe I'm looking too deep, and there's nothing there. You know, I I don't know. Yeah, you're you looking know? too too deep. I think. Uh, okay. I think, All right. I think, Fair I mean, he was just. Uh, I think he was just finding, finding words to, to say, over and over again. Yeah. You know, I thought about this movie, and uh, how it pushed buttons back in the day in 1974, and I can see it really offending tidy whitey America, uh, for oh, sure. For sure. Yeah. And could you imagine if it was remade today, recasted with some great voice talent and, and like you said, a higher production? Yes, uh, you need to improve maybe the effects, yeah. T- tweak the story so it's a little bit more understandable. I think you would have a just massive hit because it's, yeah. it's yeah. a race. In America, I agree race, with you. Yeah. Race is a I, I agree with you. Issue. I think this thing was very close to being something amazing. Um, I, I, I think it... it, it it went in a little bit too much obscurity and abstract. It got too little ab- much abstract, and, yeah, and it didn't. It was, you know, yeah, you needed yeah. a bit of. Uh, but there was a compelling story here, and there was definitely uh, it, it. It did bring up that racially charged tension and and controversial stuff. That's really good for audiences to mull over and think about, you know. So it it had the makings for something really great. The execution to me was a little too abstract, and the effects of nineteen seventy four was a shortcoming that they just at the time obviously they couldn't overcome right um and so you put all that together in today's day and age and you, you how you how it stands stacks up against today's movies well it, you know it, it leaves a lot to be desired but you, you know yes if you put it uh you know you take all those things in consideration i think you had something that was there was good work done within this project steve oh uh no i i think I think that was a wonderful, wonderful uh, segue into the into the trivia. Or, or maybe Phil's got more to say. All I'm gonna say, I think to your point there, John. Uh, I looked past all that and just enjoyed the movie. Just on a uh, maybe you know sometimes you're not in the mood for that kind of movie or it just whatever. I just I had fun with it. Oh, I watched man. it on. I'm super happy you you liked it. I'm I'm glad you liked it. I. I was really excited watching the movie. I don't know why. It was just, I don't know. It just inspired me. Just, also, I just, loved everything I was looking at. It was all cool and shit. And <laughs> it, well, you know, it probably hits you in a sweet spot of your cinema belly button. Or, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> got my juices going. Ooh. Got my juices going. I'll, I'll throw, throw one, before we go to the trivia, I'm going to throw one more thing in there. Is that there is, I, I read somewhere, uh, a, and I didn't do a lot of after research about this movie, but, or maybe my wife brought it up or something, but apparently Miss America here was to represent uh, the United States to black people in that uh, it it looks alluring. Uh, She draws you in and then she really just tears you apart. Yeah. Right. And, And, and so that's, that's kind of, it was like a metaphor to, 
what America was to, the, to black the, people. The yeah. embodiment. We're, we're beautiful America. Come to us yeah. and uh, yeah, show no, you get done. Yeah, we'll we're going to shoot you. you with our vaginas. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and then, yeah, we'll discourage you. <laughs> Treat you like shit. Let's There's get on the trip. The, you got the clap, right? right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All of that scene. Wow. I mean, oh, man. Uh, I, there's I, a lot I, to I, talk about. But. I need I need to watch this movie again so I can quote it better. <laughs> Maybe, but only Steve, around certain people. <laughs> Steve, you could do a solo review. It's so much you want to unpack. Oh, part two. No, no, no. It, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, let's get into this trivia. Um, in researching this film, Ralph Bakshi, uh, Bakshi. I'm so sorry. Uh, Mr. Man, um, went into Harlem with a tape recorder and asked various people what it uh, what it's like to be black in America. And uh, and it's probably wow. a pretty good way to uh, do research for such a movie. You know, that's yeah, not, well, not bad, definitely. you know. Get it from the ground. Any of those you know? recordings for the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Uh, Ralph is still with us. I did some a little bit of research, and he's 82. He's got a a, a lot of movies. He was very productive in the uh, 70s, 80s, and then he ended up, as far as I know, with Cool World, which I vaguely remember. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he seems like a guy that really just tells it tells it like it is through his movies. I won't, you know, I want I want to see more. I want to see more of his stuff. Do you remember that scene where um, they're in a dance club and there's this white couple talking to them? Um, oh, the, the, and, oh. and they're live action and, and everyone, the rest of the cast is, is animated. And, and uh, the lady is going on and on about uh, the, all the colors they're wearing and, um, and how she can't get away with uh, all these uh, fancy colors and... Like a white, oh, yeah, I know what you're like yeah, a yeah, super awkward conversation, yeah, <laughs> oh, like super awkward. And the guy's like, Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, honey, yep, yeah, that's right, yeah, honey, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. 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 I mean, <laughs> I feel like a lot of these things still, it's 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 not changed much in today's America from my watching America. Um, I, I'm sure it depends on where you are, yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Oh, uh, we uh, everybody's got. Yeah their thing issues and but this movie really was pushing america and the state of things at that time and and harlem was it based in harlem yeah uh, yeah yeah i mean i think for the most part yeah and then yeah. they they had even mentioned that um that uh, harlem the blacks in harlem had it on lockdown right they, they basically had no whites in the area and that was in the 70s so um, back then, it, that was that was the case. That was the case. You know, a, a quick note: they really he amped up stereotypes in this movie. Eh? It just was woo, everything like pimps and uh, like the uh, uh, Asian people at the massage parlor. It was just very, yeah. <laughs> now that would probably not fly at all. So I'll take the next trivia here. Sure. Although the movie had been opposed by Congress of racial inequality, the NAACP yep. National Congress Social of Racial Equality. Sorry, I just want to. It's not inequality; it's equality. I think that's a, a you know. What you said? Inequality. I didn't say Although it. it been... I, I was about to say it. <laughs> Nas Sorry, National I, Association. Sorry, I should have interrupted. Yeah. For the advancement of colored people, had written a letter describing the film as a difficult satire but supported it core's protest led to the film's eventual disappearance let's unpack that what does that mean it disappeared okay sure it just didn't get as much of a release as it, as it should have because of the congress of racial equality right they said uh this is not appropriate they're a, a respected body in these matters and they said this is not appropriate, so they uh, they had enough influence to kibosh it. Um, yeah. So there was there was there was some debate. There was some debate. John, give us the next piece of trivia. All right. In two thousand five, Ralph Bakshi stated in interviews that he, along with hip hop group 
Wu Tang Clan and producer Albert S. Rudy, Ruddy probably, planned on producing a sequel. Awesome. 2005. So we're talking a long time. We're talking 30 years, 31 years later. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? We're talking of a sequel. Our man yeah, Ralph. 15 years ago. <laughs> our man Ralph would have been 65 and ready to go. And he still yeah. might be ready to go. He might want to do this. You know, you, you know, you got your uh, Clint Eastwoods. They're still kicking. You can do it yeah. well. I don't know. <laughs> we don't know <laughs> his situation. He could be. Uh... I I just say yeah. sequel. I, I I would be in. Let's do it. <laughs> I think I think never mind the sequel. I think a redo is what he's done. It, to, to, just to cleanse this movie of what it should have been in the first place because of the shortcomings of 1974, uh, you know, animation and uh, effects. The effects just they needed a up, upgrade. And if you did that, like like we talked about earlier, I think this uh, this they should re a reboot before a sequel. My my opinion. Oh yeah, Maybe, somebody, hey, can, somebody can do it. Somebody can do it. Hey man, a trilogy. Let's just keep going. There's Fast and the Furious, and then there's Coonskin. One, two, three, four, five. Did anyone did anyone look up the the <laughs> why if this the title itself is derogatory? I did. Okay, and what what is it? Because I don't even know. I, uh, I, I don't know it, the origins of Coon or any of that stuff. I know I, I, I I that's a derogatory. Give you, yes. I'll give you what I found research here one okay. sound i gotta locate it yeah that word is derogatory for, as i understand it uh yeah, yeah. i yeah. know that i think i know that much but that's about as much as i know i think like you know and i probably i might already have my foot in my mouth for what i've said because of my ignorance you know i don't know uh you don't know what there's a lot of things i don't know <laughs> yeah here here's what i i, I looked up okay the dictionary, uh, Marianne Webster says it's a yeah. pelt of raccoon. A pelt of raccoon. Yes, I know that's right. But I, Urban Dictionary says coonskin, a word meaning dark skin, but in a demeaning way. So it's it is. It's like a, a it's a racially charged word. Okay. And like, I've never heard it growing up in my life in Canada here, but I, no. it, it, it obviously is a word that's uh, offensive. So right. now, I don't know. Like, I wouldn't be throwing that <laughs> yeah. away around. For sure it matters. A lot of it depends on where you live, right? So, yeah. yeah. Um, yes, it's true, I guess. Yeah, so just so people are clear out there, we're not racist. We, we're, we may be ignorant. So if we throw in a way around the word coonskin or the fact that we're even covering this because it's called coonskin, this is just because we didn't know. <laughs> it's not because we. Well, it's it's the movie know. title, and you know, it's we're trying to be faithful to the review and not like. Yeah. It's it's sure. what it was called. It was released. Look it up on yeah. IMDb. We're not. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but I enjoyed the movie, guys. I mean. All right. I got this next last piece of trivia. The working title of this movie was Harlem Nights. Um. Harlem Nights uh, 1989 was later used as the title of a film starring Richard Pryor, who uh, was a fan of Ralph Bakshi. Um, both films uh, featured the crime racket in Harlem as a plot point. So it's, it's nice to know that um, um, Richard Pryor uh, had his, has his uh, stamp of approval for Ralph Bakshi. And um, and uh, as charged as this is, as 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 racially charged as this movie is, it's uh, it's it's appreciated on both sides of uh, of, of white and black, <laughs> which uh, and yeah, you know, I, I, I wish I wish it was as clear clean as that, but I can't. It's just, it, it makes it does beg the question though is that this core the congress of racial equality um if the name the title of the movie had been harlem nights would that m maybe have made a difference because coonskin now that we understand the meaning of it you're if you title a movie with a racially charged title that could set off some alarms just right there you know that might be enough to make it well 
I think, guys, that was intended. I, I'm sure as shit. They, sure. Knew, they, they knew they were like saying, hey, man, deal with this movie. And if you don't like it, whatever. It, it, it's just, yeah. it was a, like, imagine it in 1974, a big to you, white America. Like, that's what I get from this movie, right? And I like that. I like, yeah, man. <laughs> Now, I was I was going through a lot of these different trivia points, and I came across one that I, I'm surprised I didn't make the cut. But um, Martin Scorsese was shooting Taxi Driver in the, in in New York City, and uh, and he he was he was filming a scene on the street, and a nearby movie theater was was screening Coonskin, and apparently a lot of people left the theater uh, in a huff, <laughs> and. Uh, and Martin Scorsese was able to film uh, some of the reactions of these people oh, coming wow. out of the movie theater, and and they were they were they were yelling and, and running out of the movie theater, and and he, Martin Scorsese sent that video to Ralph Bakshi, <laughs> and uh, he he didn't know whether to laugh or cry. <laughs> uh, anyway, I thought that was hilarious. Oh, wow. I, it is kind of hilarious. And I, to me, from where I sit, I think any strong reaction to a movie is a success. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I the like... worst thing is that you just get people coming out looking like they just, you know, have been at the dentist or something. You know, I mean, um, so I, I could only imagine this movie really. I think must. I think I can see it influencing a lot of uh, people, like maybe Quentin Tarantino. You know, guys pushing and doing movies in the future. I can see that. You know, yeah, uh, I can. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, this this actually seems to me more of like a a, a study, like a, it's it's not, it, it it lacks things, but it's a study for like filmmakers. You know, it's like uh, it, it really is a, a art has project. a lot packed into it. Yeah, like a, <clears throat> a like a, a, a uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's a, there's there's a lot packed into it to to study and and including mistakes. Uh, so I think this is really, a, a, it covers so much, you know, controversy, it covers bad effects, it covers good effects, it covers, uh, you know, just a lot of things that it goes into filmmaking and and, and racism and, uh, you know, sexism and, and stereotypes and all these things. Oh, oh, oh yeah. It's, it, it's it, all in there. And it, so it's kind of like you threw the kitchen sink in, in this one film. So you, you can just have a lot to look at, a lot to talk about, a lot to study uh, and including the shortcomings and the successes of it, right? So I think it, it is it is a value for sure. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, is that uh, is that Coonskin? I think so. I want to shout out to uh, Philip Michael Thomas. If you guys know from Miami Vice, he was the guy, the prison partner, the oh, actor. Really? Yeah, I don't. Phil Michael oh. Thomas, Miami Voice. He must have been oh, like yeah, yeah. twenty years old or something. Because nineteen seventy four, Miami Vice didn't hit till like the early eighties. So yeah, yeah, that was him. Wow, that must have been like first role. Oh, whatever, <laughs> a little bit of extra extra trivia. Extra trivia. Go. I love it. I love it. I love awesome. it. Awesome. That was Coonskin. We are primarily critical. You are awesome for joining us. Um, uh, next week, Monday at noon, we're covering um, Bad Trip. Oh, uh, Phil, this is your pick. Oh, guys, one of the funniest movies I've seen in, in a ever. <laughs> I'm not going to say the one we just reviewed. That would oh, be I can't, I can't wait to, to talk All about right. it. Um, well. <laughs> We'll see you I'm guys laughing then. about, we'll I'm guys laughing about it right now, and we haven't even done the review yet. <laughs> All right. All right. I will, we'll, we'll talk soon. <laughs> yep. See you next time. Bye.